Welcome to Navigating Cancer Together. My name is Talaya Dindi. I'm a cancer thriver, cancer doula, independent patient advocate, and owner of On the Other Side. I use my experience to help others get on the other side of cancer. Gaps between the guidance, emotional support, and education that are needed and what one receives can be huge. This podcast fills those gaps by sharing stories, resources, and information about all things related to cancer and wellness. I interview guests from all walks of life who are living with cancer, caregivers, and those who are thriving on the other side. Also, I talk with organizations, healthcare professionals, and experts in the health and wellness spaces who offer complementary and integrative care. Join me. We are in this together. Hello, everyone. This is Talaya Dindi from OnTheOtherSide.life, and you're listening to Navigating Cancer Together, the show that has something for everyone facing cancer. Why? Because everyone is different. We're different needs, beliefs, and perspectives. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I encourage you to open your minds and your hearts. Today, our special guest is Crystal Grenier. Crystal D. Grenier is a breast cancer thriver who offers heartfelt guidance in all facets of illness to reclaim your health and restore your vitality using natural modalities. Her deep background in health and fitness, as well as her cancer experience, have given her the tools to share intentional insight into alternative methods of self-acceptance, continued growth, and abundant living. As an active yogi, Crystal has created, implemented, and participated in numerous health and wellness retreats. Crystal is a published author with her book, Crystallize Your Health, Thriving Through Chronic Illness. She is also a contributing writer for Thrive Global, a local newspaper column, Healing Through Conversations, and a contributing author in Feisty, Dangerously Amazing Women Using Their Voice and Making an Impact. She also holds a bachelor's in communications and business and a master's in sports management. She currently lives in North Dakota and is married with two adult daughters. Christo is an online wellness consultant and coach who helps women thrive despite a chronic illness through guided offers and emotional health, focusing on her healing pillars of support, which are nourishment, movement, and emotional alchemy. Crystal, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being here and it's good to see you again. It's good to see you again as well, Crystal. For those of you who do not know, Crystal was actually on Navigating Cancer Together maybe about a year or so ago. We really had a great conversation. So Crystal is back with us today to give us some updates on the work that she's doing as well as her new book. So before we get started, Crystal, how are you feeling today? I am feeling really good. Health is good. Still cancer-free. Six years. Actually, tomorrow will be my anniversary date for six years. Congratulations. Since my diagnosis. Thank you. So yeah, feeling really good. Just flowing. Just being really present and being mindful and aware of where I'm at and where I'm going. Wonderful. That is great. Six years is a huge milestone. You're past that five-year mark. So yeah, nothing but up, nothing but up. Thank you. You're welcome. As I mentioned, Crystal, for those who missed your first interview and are not familiar with your story and cancer journey, please tell them, first of all, who you are and how mm-hmm. you discovered that you had breast cancer. I am a 60-year-old woman. I just turned 60 in March. And my past place of being was in fitness and in health. So I've been a fitness instructor and personal trainer for 40 plus years and moving through my life, going day to day, I discovered a lump in my armpit after my first hip replacement in June. And I found this lump in August of 17. It wasn't on the left side, on the right side. Of course, you want to get it checked out because it's not normal to feel a lump in your armpit. Upon, obviously, ultrasound biopsy, it turned out to be invasive ductal carcinoma, which is breast cancer. Total shock, total 
disbelief of where this came from because I practiced a pretty much healthy lifestyle, obviously with my food intake and my movement, my exercise. After going through all the steps of surgery to remove lymph nodes on the right side because it had actually shifted from my breast into my lymph system. So that's why they couldn't see it on a mamio because I get them every year as well. I had nine lymph nodes removed, eight of them were cancerous, so it was moving and it was traveling throughout my body. Chemo, radiation, after going through all that journey or experience, as I like to refer to, I decided to really hone in and figure out why did I get breast cancer? Because it's not in my family, as far as I know. And actually with genetics, it's only 10% or less that they find breast cancer, I believe, or any types of cancers. If I'm wrong, please clarify that for me. Mm -hmm. So I really honed in and really started working with a coach, a business coach. Actually, I saw a therapist. I lost my mother in 2020. I've had a loss of a father and a half sister, tragically as a young child and then as a young adult and then my mom. So I actually talked to a therapist to figure out how to deal with these emotions and grief before I started to work with this coach because I wanted to change direction of business and come to find out that I had not processed my grief at all. I've been stuffing my emotions for years as a young child. And I attribute the emotional stuffing and ignorance to the manifestation of the cancer in my body. So it obviously came out as a sign. Hello, you need to change something because you're sick inside. Really honed in on changing my business direction as well as working with myself with self-care, with holistic healing. And I've been using emotional modalities to do that. And because I don't want to get sick again ever in my life. And I want to keep practicing my modalities to stay healthy. And I want to support other women with that experience, with that awareness of choices on how to stay healthy holistically and look at the emotional foundation of that. So that's kind of how I, I got from me before to the crystal now. I'm realizing that I'm free to be me. I'm learning not to be impatient and just not grasp externally for happiness and learning to self-love. So going inside internally and really cultivating that self-love for myself. Crystal, what was one of the first things you noticed when you started to take care of your emotional health, when you started talking with a therapist, what were the first things that you noticed about yourself that began to change? I think just more like not being anxious all the time and reaching externally. I'll go back to that a little bit, just relaxing and flowing into what's going on. Like not feeling I have to take control all the time and be in my type A place, my ego. I'm learning to move to my feminine side and embrace that. So the last two years, two and a half years, that's been a huge shift for me is that embracing of the feminine, allowing myself to have fun. What is my fun factor? Cultivating my writing. I've realized that I love to write and I'm good at it. So how can I share that as a communication platform? as well as podcasting and and public speaking terrifies me. So if I could do it like this and in a book, I'm all over it. Just flowing, being aware and taking those choices that I have to try to heal myself holistically and bringing new ones in. I've got a couple of things in the fire that I'm working on that I want to bring to the table, which I think are going to be huge. I love that. And what your story says to me is that it doesn't matter your age. You can change and make improvements and even make a total change in direction at any stage in life, as long as you're willing to do the work. So thank you for sharing that, because I think it's really important for women out there who feel like they're just stuck in whatever that is. So you are an example of someone who really took charge of your health, your quality of life, and really what you wanted to do in life and just did the things to help you start to make those changes. Yes, definitely. That's what I want to be as an inspiration to others that it can be done. You just take baby steps. You don't have to do it all in one full swoop. There's baby steps. And that's why I'm really passionate about guiding other women on taking those steps up the staircase to 
whatever that is for them. We're all different as we know, and we all heal differently and we all are going to require and maybe need different modalities of healing. And that's what it's all about is having those choices, depending on what that individual needs, what's going to work for them. Crystal, based on your experience, would you say that breast cancer has been a curse or a blessing for you? I was never one to say, can I say F you on here? I was never one to like (laughs) say that or wear pink. I don't know. I just was not that person. Mm -hmm. So to me, yes, it was a blessing. It was a message for me to make a shift in my energy, a shift in my energy and change the energy in my body internally and externally so I could heal. And then so I can be passionate and inspired to share it with others. So I didn't look at it negatively. I never did. Obviously, when you're going through the chemo and the radiation, you have the, why me? You go that pessimistic side of feeling sorry for yourself. But I just kept moving every day and I kept eating. I just, I never looked at it as a bad thing. Like a lot of women and or men do that. They hold that negative energy and that is not going to help you heal. That's the truth. Yes. It's not going to help you heal. What prompted you to write your book about chronic illness? Your book is called Crystallize Your Health, Thriving Through Chronic Illness. So tell the audience what prompted you to write the book and then a little bit about what the book is about. Definitely. I did a free workshop two years ago, which you are part of, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I did a workshop two years ago online around female chronic illness, alchemizing your emotions. I wanted to interview coaches, professionals, therapists, women. I have one man in the book, but women and or one man that practice holistic healing in whatever capacity that is for them and how they have used it for themselves and or they're supporting of other people that are going through chronic illness. The workshop is what inspired me to write the book. So I had the meat of the book, like in my head and in my thought process of doing these interviews and then copy editing them and putting them into a book. And then on the front and the back of it, I wanted to obviously share my story of going through breast cancer, Mm -hmm. going into what caused my cancer as a child and what I went through. I've threaded crystals throughout the book because I love crystals and the healing capacity of crystals. So I talked a little bit about that, about as a young child, I used to collect stones and crystals and adorn my room with them. I really didn't know what they meant, but I thought they were pretty. And I used to wear turquoise a lot and mother of pearl. And researching that a little bit, I found out that those particular stones and crystals are for emotional healing, which is ironically crazy. I took the interviews and parted them like I did with the workshops. Five of them were under nutrition, five were under movement and or nourishment, movement, and then alchemy. I was only able to get 13 of the 15 to commit to the book, which was fine. So I laid those out. After each part or pillar, then I had a place where, what did I know? What awareness did I have around nourishment? And then what did I learn afterwards? So I put that into the book as well after each part. So that kind of gave the audience or the reader a piece of, okay, we all know something when we go into learning about something new, but then what can you take from it? You don't have to have a chronic illness to appreciate the content that's in this book. You're going to pull your nuggets of information out that maybe will help you heal, that touch you in a way that are going to gravitate towards your health holistically. The really fun part for me was taking a crystal based upon our conversation and who you are personality wise and giving each of my speakers a crystal. And then I gave you a one word title to your chapter. That was the fun part for me. And then I described the crystal a little bit. If you get the book on Kindle, you will see the crystals in color, but in the book, they are black and white. I have activities after each part because I'm all about action and activity. After the nourishment part, I have a heart that you can color. It's like a crystal heart. And then the movement component or pillar. As a yoga instructor, I have a 30 minute code that you can scan to do the yoga stretch with me, just real basic. And then the third emotional alchemy piece, I have a code that you can scan for a five minute meditation around emotional health. So it just all flowed together. I commissioned the book cover. She did an awesome job on that. It was a great experience to write it. And I really enjoy sharing it. I really enjoy being a part of it. Thank you for inviting me 
to do that. I really enjoyed the workshop. The book is beautiful. Is that workshop still available somewhere, Crystal, if people are interested? It is. It's on my link tree page. Okay. Perfect. Crystal, tell the audience where they can find your book. My book is on Amazon, Goodreads, and Barnes and Noble. So you can just type the title in and it'll pop up for you. If you do read the book, I would love a review whatever that turns out to be. Hopefully it's good. Five stars. We always want those, yeah. but be real, be realistic with your review. And you can actually take the one review and you can post it in all three places. So on all three of those platforms to purchase. Crystal, how did your healing pillars of awareness shift after your workshop and book interviews? What changed? Oh, one more thing to lay. You can get my book on my website too. Sorry. There is a page on there for that as well. So with my pillars, I, I think doing the workshop in the book gave me more of an affirmation or more of a solid foundation of sharing what I know and what I'm trying to put out there in the world to consult and coach. Having other experts around my table in a collaboration effort gave me that confidence to share what I'm doing with my consulting coaching. So for me around nourishment, I learned that it's not just food that nourishes you. Okay. You've got your five places of well-being that I talk about. So you've got your food, whatever that is for you. I'm vegan. I went vegan three years ago and I love it and I feel great, but it may not be for everybody, but cleaning up that diet. So you feel good physically. That obviously comes with movement. What kind of physical activity are you doing every day? Depending on what you can do. It's where you are physically, even if you're stretching in a chair, whatever that is. Spiritually, how are you cultivating and nourishing your spiritual well-being? Is it through meditation? Is it through a higher being of prayer? Whatever that is for you. Socially, so are you holding on into any toxic relationships? How can you keep those relationships cultivated and healthy? Because you're nourishing yourself, but then you're also nourishing your relationships and you're hoping to reciprocate that. Then mentally, emotionally, the big one, how are you um, nourishing your mind? Are you doing meditation? Are you doing deep breathing maybe? Or journaling, getting it out of here or down on paper. EFT tapping, that's another one because Bradley Yates is in my book and that's a big one for mental, getting to those meridians and energy points. Movement for me, again, same thing. Like it's not just working out at the gym. As a fitness instructor and trainer, that was what I thought it was about, but Again, it's the tapping, the stretching, the yoga, the breathing. You're moving your body internally and externally daily. And then the alchemy component, I have learned through me personally, as an emotional reaction, I would get caught up in conversation or arguments and I would have to get the last word in. It was like a back and forth battle all the time, or I would just shut down and I'd walk out and not say anything. And that's how the emotional stuffing happened with me is shutting down, stepping away. So now I'm learning to inform. I've learned to inform. Yes, I hear what you're saying. I understand where you're coming from. I need to process what you're sharing with me and I'm going to come back and then I'll respond. So that's been huge for me. And it's been so refreshing. Like I'm saying something and I'm communicating that with my air, with my air element, but then I'm stepping back in my presence and then coming back and responding with something. So it's not heated and you don't say something that you regret saying. Mm -hmm. So those are the main things that I've learned through my pillars in writing the book and doing the workshop and just practicing on my own self-care. So wonderful that you were able to really work on those things for yourself, but then also use what you've learned and what has helped you to help other women facing chronic illness. And to that point, please share an example of how you've helped a client and what was their outcome? Okay. I'm just thinking of one client in particular. She was actually in a proactive place, so she's never had an illness, but she's around my age and she wanted more energy to play with her grandkids, not be tired every day. So we focused on changing up her diet. What are you eating every day? What energetic foods can you put into your body? How are you moving every day? Is, are you walking? Are you put together a little workout or something that she could do daily around her full-time job and 
her other activities. Journaling, I, we talked about journaling and writing things down because she gets up in her head a lot. Like she was very anxious and very worried all the time about many things. So taking those thoughts and bringing them from your head down to paper. Then mirror work is another thing that I would like to bring in. So you're looking in the mirror and you're reading those stories. Then we talked about ways of letting them go. So ways, and this is something I went through personally, writing my stories down and then affirming how I could change that story. First of all, writing the story down, how did it impact me? Like with a specific incident or experience and then how can I affirm and change that? Then I burned them. I took them out in the fire pit and burned them. So that means you're letting them go and you're releasing them out into the universe. So we, that's just roughly what we did with those three pillars of holistic healing to help her move through that stagnant energy. So she felt more alive every day and she was able to get that anxious energy out of her body, out and away. She's doing really well. She's loving life. You always see pictures on Facebook of her with her grandkids and they're doing all these activities and going places. That just makes my heart happy. That's a great example. Thank and you. Crystal, how can a woman go about working with you? What is the first step? The first step, I would love to just do a phone consult, just free, just let's get on the phone and just talk and have a conversation. So we can see if we can connect and work together. So that's my first step, just reaching out either on my social media platforms, you can DM me, email me, and just reach out so we can start that conversation is the best way to start collaborating and working together. Yeah, that's so important is making that first connection to see if it is possibly a good fit, because sometimes there isn't that alignment. And mm -hmm. that's okay, but maybe you could refer to them to someone else. So I think yeah. that is a great way to get started is just make that first connection. It's just a conversation. There's no commitment. You're just talking. And sometimes people struggle with that, especially women. We struggle opening up and being transparent because we feel guilty or ashamed or we hold all those emotions of, um, I'm weak. If I share things, I'm weak. And we want to put on that persona of not being, but I think there's a shift, like a paradigm shift where we're moving into that feminine strength and power. We want to be heard. We want to stand up and say, this isn't right. And this is what's happening. So hopefully more women will step forward and want to have, have that conversation and start to work on hid their hidden agenda. There may be things yeah. underneath that they have no idea that are there. That's true. Everyone has a voice. It's okay mm -hmm. to use it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Crystal, I find it interesting that your name is Crystal and <laughs> <laughs> you have a relationship with crystals. So please tell the audience how crystals support your healing. You touched on it a little bit in the beginning, mm -hmm. but if you just want to go a little bit deeper into how crystals support your healing and how you use them to do that. They adorn my office. They're everywhere in here. I've got this really pretty, this kind of sits by my computer to keep the electronic vibes like energetically away from me. I have picked up more crystals as I do dove into them into my book and, and adorned my office with them. I can feel the energy of them. And I've always gravitated, obviously, towards more emotional crystals. Like I've got a lot of rose quartz. I've got clear quartz. I've got tiger's eye up there, citrine. So I'm bringing these crystals in and I hold, depending on what's going on, like I might pull one out a day. I actually have a crystal card deck that I've been doing daily inspirations, but I do it once a week. You hold the crystal, you embrace it, and then you set an intention or an affirmation around it. By being surrounded by them, I feel that energy. Mm -hmm. But if I'm working with a client, of course, we would hone in on something going on. For example, citrine is for happiness and joy. And if they're lacking that, maybe you would bring that in and, and hold it and just set some intention around that journal around it. And then hopefully they would pick up one to have in their space to help with healing. Let's segue now into energy because healing energy, all of those are related. Mm -hmm. And Everything we do, everything we touch, see is energy. 
What are chakras and how can they support balance and healing? Chakras are tied into yoga. That's where you learn about them. I call them like energy wheels. So they go from the top of your, the crown of your head. And there's actually more, but there's seven main ones. So they go from the top of your head all the way down to your growing. They're wheels of energy that spin and they're in color. And they keep spinning all the way down to keep the energy moving in your body at a balanced state. So the crown chakra is generally white or violet, and that is your spiritual, your enlightenment. The second one is your third eye. That's your intuition. It's usually indigo in color, a blue purple. So that's your intuition, your mind, your awareness. You move down to your throat chakra, which is obviously communication. It's blue in color. So are you lacking words or do you have too many words? I'm finding out in astrology where I fall with that, that I'm an Aquarius with where that falls. And obviously I was lacking words way back in the day. And then sometimes I just puke all over everybody. That's just, I give too much. It's like <laughs> my girls are, my daughters are like, mom, you don't need to like share so much. I'm like, I know I can't help it. Then you move down to the heart chakra, which is green in color. And that's where I've been. I've been cultivating and nurturing that little girl right now. Moving down to your solar plexus, which is right above your belly button. That's yellow in color. That's where your that's um, the fire, your energy you, it radiates from you. You're energetic and you're fiery. Moving down into sacral is orange in color. And this is where I've had all my stuff, like your emotions are down there, your sexuality, your secrets. In looking at the chakras and the healing component, I've had two hip replacements. I've had two C-sections. So I go back and I'm like, oh, my sacral chakra, I believe, was shut, was closed off or shut down to bring all these things out physically that I had to do. Then you move down into the root chakra, which is red in color, and that's your grounding, your foundation. Instead of being flighty and up here all the time, we need to ground. We need to go out in the grass and your bare feet and just be in nature and just ground yourself into the earth. So those are the seven main ones in color. And like I said, there's some more up here in your aura. But um, as long as those are balanced and spinning, you should hopefully be healthy and think clearly and be on all those places of well-being, of balance. Thank you for sharing that and yeah. explaining those chakras, Crystal. With all the work that you do, the different modalities that you focus on and your own experience with cancer, what advice do you have for cancer survivors who are trying to figure out what the next step is for their lives after cancer treatment? My advice would be, to, I think, seek support. There are support groups obviously out there for everything, pre, during, and post. I think it's like a grieving process, really, especially if you've lost both of your breasts or lost a body part, depending on what your disease was. So finding a support group or a coach or a consultant like me that helps you release those emotions and like a sounding board and getting things out. So you're not harboring everything in. There's a difference when you blast everything on Facebook, which mm -hmm. some people are notorious for that. I was very sheltered with what I was doing. I kept inside. I did not post anything. My mom wanted to come out from Idaho to support me. And I'm like, no, mom, I'm good. You don't need to come. And other people are like oh, puking all over the internet. And maybe that works for them. I don't know. Everybody's different. But I think finding somebody that you can talk to, or if you're comfortable in a group setting, finding that support that way to continue healing with your emotions and with your physical, all your places of well being, until you get to a place where you feel comfortable that you can function on your own in this new place of being present. Thank you for that yeah. advice. Crystal, I want to piggyback off of something that you just mentioned, and that was possibly losing one or both breasts. If you don't mind sharing, did you have breast surgery? I had a nipple sparing mastectomy. I'm the only one that I know that's had that. Other women have either had them removed, lumpectomy, whatever. 
So a nipple sparing mastectomy is they went in and took some breast tissue off the side to test it. And then I had lymph nodes removed because that's where the breast cancer was. So I was fortunate to keep my breasts and my nipples, but I'm just a little lopsided on one side because they took that tissue out. Honestly, in transparency, I had breast implants just for me 10 plus years ago because I wanted bigger breasts. When I was diagnosed and then I went back after everything, because like I said, it is lopsided. She goes, you can redo them or you can just live with it. I just, I didn't want to go under the knife again. So I'm just sitting where I'm at with one breast a little smaller than the other after I wanted to make them perfect 10 plus years ago. And that's okay. A lot of women get those implants taken out because they've got toxicity with that. I think you did a podcast on that I at did. one point. Yes, yes. Yeah. But I was very sick and she had to have them removed. And when she did, it was like her health perked up right away. I've had a couple of friends that same thing. They were so sick with different symptoms and things happening in other places of the body. And yes, once they took them out, all was good. You're right. Everyone's different. They respond, their bodies respond to things differently, but thank you for sharing that. Cause I think what you experienced and what you chose to do is very important for the listeners to hear. That's probably an option. Someone never heard about or was presented to them. Crystal, as we wrap up here, I have two more questions that I like to ask my guests. The first one is what is one I wish I would have known? And it can be related to your life. It can be related to cancer, whatever. But what is one I wish I would have known? I wish I would have known as a young girl and child, young adult, how to communicate and talk about what was going on with me. My mother, obviously, and that's something else I've learned too, is not to blame my past. I've I've stepped away from that because I did. I wish I would have known how to address my emotions in a healthier way as a young person, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Have that in the house. We're not taught those things. No. Yeah. And I don't think my mother was either. So Mm -hmm. she didn't know. So it was a generational thing. So now with my daughters, we talk all the time about everything. And I think that's, I'm breaking that cycle. Good. That's great. Yeah. Because you don't know what you don't know. And you mentioned generational. That's typically how it goes until one person says, Hey, this isn't right. I, I, no, we should figure out how to work through this thing. And so that's what you've done. I know. And I think having breast cancer come to me was, that was a sign that I needed to break that cycle. Like I needed to do something drastic. And moving through grief, that's just, again, back in the day, you shoved it under a carpet and went on your way like, I'm fine. No, you're not fine. So yes, but I'm not blaming, like I said, I've learned to not blame my mom and her predecessors to how she was raised because it's not her fault. Yeah. It's all she knew. Yeah. Making do with the best, trying to do the best with what they have and know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Finally, Crystal, what's something that people often misunderstand about you or your work? Oh my goodness. That is a good question. I think they misunderstand my presentation. Like they see me as this, I mean, as an example, I met this gal that's in my red thread publishing community and she's very chill, very relaxed. And when she first met me, she goes, you come off very hard. (laughs) Like you're very like, Mm -hmm. presently there and I'm an Aries rising which makes sense to me that's just my fire that's how I present myself I've never had anybody say that to me before so I think I get misunderstood because they think I'm so in control and uptight and like I'm not going to be easy to talk to because I'm going to be judgmental and criticize and all these personality traits that I'm actually not I think that maybe that's why they're scared to talk to me and reach out to Mm -hmm. me I don't I'm actually in the process of maybe working on energy work. So I'm looking for a Reiki master to help me cultivate energetically to maybe get that connection a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. So people want to flow and I'm opening my arms to welcome them in with good energy, which I think I have good energy, but maybe I'm not presenting it that way. Mm-hmm. Does that make I sense? Think you have good, absolutely. Oh. I think you have good energy. Yeah. I think for me, 
because I'm so used to talking to all different kinds of people, mm -hmm. it's just, oh, okay. It doesn't make me not want to talk to you or yeah. anything like that or push me away. It's just, oh, okay. That's maybe that's her nature, or maybe she's going through something today, whatever that is. But for you in particular, I never felt that way. Oh, she's hired. I, mm. <laughs> Thank you. Know. you. I think um, she's an empath too, this gal I'm talking about. So she's very energetically yeah. attuned to people mm -hmm. and all that. And I've noticed I'm trying to be more, I'm more aware of it now. Like I said, we talked about not speaking before I think about what I say. So I'm more aware of just sliding in a little bit and then showing my determination and my confidence without being overpowering with it, I think. Yeah. And some people get intimidated by that. I know you didn't because you, this is what you do. Then when your friends start to notice changes in you, I've had a really good friend of mine notice a change in me in the past mm -hmm. two years. That means I'm doing something right. Yeah. Personally. The people that really know you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They see that shift, that energetic shift with me and how I communicate and how I relate to them in relationships. So that's a huge, that's a plus for me. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't buy that. <laughs> That's the truth. Crystal, it has been a pleasure talking with you again. I just want to say that I have noticed the growth even since the last time we talked mm -hmm. about a year ago. Also, what your story says to me is that cancer showed up in your life. And of course, it's not something that's fun. It's nothing any of us want to go through. But from what I see and from what you've shared it really prompted some changes, major changes in your life that benefit you, that work for you, but mm -hmm. then that are allowing you to go out and help other people as well. So I just yeah. want to applaud you for that. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Crystal, again, it was a pleasure talking with you. I will share your information in the listen notes so that the listeners can get your book, listen to, or watch the workshop. And yeah. just learn more about the work you do. Thank you so much, Talia. I appreciate you. I appreciate our connection and our friendship and your willingness to share what I do. And you keep doing you because you're doing awesome. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much. I would like to give a shout out to the listeners as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share, follow, or subscribe so that you can easily find this podcast and listen again. You can also listen to Navigating Cancer Together on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcast. Are you looking to expand your professional network? Join me on LinkedIn. As an active member of the platform, I would like to personally invite you to connect with me there. Let's grow our connections together. You can simply search for Talea Dindi, B-C-P-A, that's spelled T-A-L-A-Y-A, D-E-N-D-Y and B-C-P-A. That is it for this Wednesday. And until next time, let's keep navigating cancer together. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I hope you found it helpful. Please be sure to subscribe, share, and tell your friends and family about it. For notes from the show and previous episodes, visit ontheotherside.life and check out the podcast section. I would love it if you join me for the next episode. Talk to you soon.